this video, we're going to look at the slice method in Google Apps Script. The slice method allows you to extract portions of a larger array or a larger string. So we want to get into the editor window. You can do that by going to extensions and Apps Script. I'm going to call this first function slice1. I'm going to start out with a very basic example. We're going to create a variable called string and set that equal to the word hello. We're going to have a variable called extract and we're going to set that equal to our string variable and then we're going to use the slice method. The slice method has two inputs. The first input is the starting position of where you want the extract to begin. The second input is the end position of where you want the extract to end. So both of these inputs have default values. The default value for the first input, the start position, is the first position of your string or array. So in Apps Script, the count of the first position is zero. It begins at zero. So H would be the first position in this string. That's position zero. E is position one. L is position two, and so on and so on. So the default value for the second input, the ending position, is going to be the last position of your string or array. So that would be the O in hello. So if I logged this out with no inputs, what we're going to see is this is going to return the entire word because those default positions are position the first position and the last position so that's going to return the entire string and it does so now if we want to return the last four letters in the word hello i can input a start position of position one leave the second input blank because the default position is the last character. So that's going to start at the E in hello and go all the way to the last character. So I hit save and run. We're going to see the last four letters and there it is. What I also like about this is you can start at the right side. So if I wanted to get the last two letters in the word hello, I could simply input a minus two hit save and run and there it is so now if we wanted to capture the first three letters of our string variable what I could do is input a value of zero for the first input and then input a value of three for the ending input so three would be the second to last letter because the count again remember starts at zero so if I hit save and run we get the first three letters so in our next example we want to apply the slice method to a range on our spreadsheet so back on our spreadsheet we have in the range B1 through B6 a range of branch locations the first cell is the header called locations so to save a little time, I've created some code here. We have a variable for spreadsheet. We have a variable for our sheet that holds our sheet. We have a variable for the range that holds the values of that range B1 through B6. And to begin, I just want to log out the values of that range variable. So I hit save and run. You can see there are our values. We have a 2D array of six rows by one column so now the first position the zero position is locations our header in that 2d array so if we wanted to remove that header and just get the locations what we could do is create a variable called new range that is going to be equal to our range variable and then we're going to apply the slice method so we want to omit the header, so we're going to start at position 1 because the header is position 0. We'll log out this 
new range. Hit save and run. And there is our array without the header. So if I wanted to write this to the cells directly to the right on our spreadsheet, what I can do is reference our sheet. We want to get range. This time we're going to use number inputs. So we want to begin on row 2, column 3, because that's column C. The number of rows we want to go down needs to be dynamic here. It has to be the same dimensions of our new range array. So we're going to reference our new range and get the length of it for the number of rows we want to go down. For the number of columns we want to go across, we know we only have one column. So that is that. And we want to set the values equal to our new range array. So I'll hit save and run. And once I run this, we should see those values get populated directly to the right without that header. And there it is. So in this next example, we're going to use the slice method to look at this range of cells containing these email addresses. And what we want to do in the cells to the right is extract this first character of the first name and last name. In other words, everything before the at email.com. So we just want to get the usernames and populate them in the cells to the right. So I've created a new function called slice three. We have the same variables we did as last time spreadsheet sheet. We have a range variable this time. It gets the values from this range here, E2 through E6. We have a, an array variable called new array. Right now it is an empty array, so that's just a set of brackets. So we then have a for loop because we're going to loop through this range array variable. So we have a counter variable called i that begins at zero, which would represent each row in our range array. We want this loop to run so long as i is less than the length of the range array, which is the length of that is five. The number we want to increment our counter variable in is increments of one, so that's i plus plus. So while this loop is running, everything inside this set of curly brackets is what we want to do while this loop is, the counter is running. So we have our new array variable. We're going to use the push method. And what the push method does is it pushes values into this empty array variable. So what we have here is an outer set of brackets because we're adding rows. So everything inside these set of brackets is a row. So we reference our range variable and then we have two sets of brackets right after the range variable. So the first set of brackets represents the row reference. So that's going to be equal to our counter variable because the counter starts at zero, which is the first row increments during each gyration of a loop, so it represents each row. Then we have our second set of brackets, which is the column. That is the one and only column, so that's column zero because it's the first column. We then use the slice method. This time we start at position zero, so we actually have to input a position zero because we have the second input that we're actually going to populate this time with where we want to stop the extract at. So we have our range variable again, that same row that we're on, the one and only column. We want to get the index of where the at symbol is found. What the index of does is returns the number position of where a value is found in a string. So we start at position zero, the very first part of the string for the email address. Our second input of where we want to end our extract is wherever the at symbol is found. So that captures everything up until the at symbol. 
So that gets the first initial and last name, everything before that at symbol. So that runs through every row, extracts that username, and then once the loop is complete, we reference our sheet, we get the range beginning in row two, column six, which is column F. The number of rows we want to go down is the length of our new array, which is the number of rows in that array. We have one column. We set the values to that new array variable, which is our new array with just the username. So I'll hit save and run. What we should see is the usernames get populated here. And there it is. So in this last example, we have a small data set of inventory items and we have dashes in each of these inventory items that separates different data points. So after the first dash, we have the inventory ID number of that inventory item. After the second dash, we have the quantity, the number of that inventory ID on hand. What we want to do is use the slice method to populate column I with the inventory ID number and column J with the quantity on hand. So we want to fill this range here. So I've created a fourth slice function. We have the same variables we did as the last function. We have spreadsheet, sheet. We have one for range. This time it is the range H2 through H6. We have our new array, which is an empty array right now. We have our for loop like we did last time. Inside our for loop, we have a begin point variable, which that is going to be equal to our range variable. We have our row reference, i, which is represents each row in our loop. We have our column reference, which is the one and only column of that range. For our begin point, we use the index of to find the first dash in each of our elements in our range variable. So that gets the number position of where that first dash is found, stores that number in this begin point variable. We have an end point variable, which is doing exactly the same thing except in our index of method we're searching for the dash and we're inputting a second optional argument here to begin at a begin point of our begin variable plus one because our begin variable holds where the first dash is found we didn't input a starting point so it's the default starting point of zero so that finds the first dash this time we define a starting point of our begin point plus one to begin after the first dash and find the second dash. So that position gets stored in the end variable. We then have a variable called my row. We have it enclosed in a set of brackets because everything inside that is a row that we're going to eventually push into this new array. So we have a comma in between that separates the two columns of this row. So our first column is going to be our range variable with our row and column reference. We're going to use the slice method. We want to begin at a point of our begin variable, which finds the first dash. We want to add one to that because we want to begin at the first character right after that first dash. Our second input is our end variable which finds the position of the second dash so that finds everything in between the two dashes for our first column which is going to be the inventory ID number. Our second column everything after the comma is going to be equal to our range reference again a row and column reference. 
we're going to slice this time beginning at our end point plus one. So that is where the second dash is found. We're going to add one to that to begin at the first character after the second dash. We don't define an ending point because the default value is the end of that string. So it goes from everything after the second dash to the end of that string for our second column. Once we have this my row variable set up, we're going to reference our new array and push my row variable to our empty array and do that for every single row as we go through this loop. Once we're done with the loop, we're going to create a variable called headers. And this is just an array of two columns, one row of two columns. So we have the ID number and the quantity. We then want to add this headers to the beginning of our new array variable. So to add an element at the beginning of an existing array, we're going to reference our new array, unshift, and then headers. That will add that to the very beginning. Then back on our sheet, we're going to get the range beginning in row one this time because we have headers. Column nine, the number of rows we want to go down is going to be the length of our new array variable. We have two columns this time. We're going to set the values of that range to our new array variable. So I'm going to make sure our fourth function is selected. I'm going to hit save and run. Once I run this, we're going to see these two columns get populated with these two data points. So hit run. And there it is. Well, that is all for now. Thanks for watching.